Hello, and welcome back to Gage Hill Crafts. I'm Sarah Scully, and thanks for joining me today. This is going to be part one of two of videos about the New York Sheep and Wool Festival. This was my first year attending, um, and I have so much to go over. I don't want to make a two-hour video for you, so I've decided to split it up into two parts, and I'm hoping that next week I will have a special guest on to um, discuss part of our trip. Um, but in the meantime, I really wanted to focus on um, people in this uh, segment. And um, even before I get started with that, I want to let you know that if you are a person that I met and gave a sample to, um, and my samples of lotion bar looked like this, um, they would have had writing on them. This is just a, a sort of a leftover one. Um, you open that sample by cutting along the perforated um, segment with your thumb. Uh, with your fingernail and then you can open that and there's your lotion bar and the way to get get that to come up is to push um, from the bottom with your finger and then you can apply the lotion like that okay and I was giving these out I'm sorry if I ran out of samples by the time I met you uh, but I gave out quite a few of these and uh, people seem to be interested in them so if you like it um, or you're interested in more information about it uh, check out the website, gagehillcrafts.com, and you can contact me through the website. You can also sign up for our newsletter to find out more information. Um, these lotion bars, the related skin creams, and also some new patterns are all going to be launching later this week. Um, this was all stuff that I kind of hoped to get out before the New York Sheep and Wool Festival, but I was very sick last week, so a few things got put on hold. Um, so thanks for bearing with me. Um, I'm also wearing the Bethel hat pattern um, that I had released earlier. There's a, an earlier video about this, but if you um, got to try on a sample with me, or if you, again, if you wanted more information about it, this is available on Ravelry, um, and it's also going to be available in our shop. And again, that link is going to go live um, in just a few days. So stay tuned, sign up for the newsletter again at gagehillcrafts.com, and you'll get all the information on products, patterns, and everything that's coming within the next week. I don't want you to miss it. Um, okay, so uh, the first thing I want to say about meeting people is that while I don't feel particularly awkward um, in kind of a fiber, uh, fiber festival setting, I, f I find it quite natural to just walk up and talk to people about knitting because that's something that we're all interested in. Um, it can be a little funny if you're using new technology to try to document uh, meeting people and so I want to say thank you to everyone who sort of suffered through my um, clumsy attempts to use my new tool which is a selfie stick that Rick got me and um, I did manage to get a few videos. We'll see clips from those next week um, and I took a bunch of pictures but yeah, I had a few moments um, <laughs> not quite knowing how to use the thing. So thank you for your patience and for uh, for everyone who's willing to take a picture or, or be on video. Thank you very much. I know it's not for everyone, and I even have days when I don't want to be, you know, in anybody's picture um, or video. So I really appreciate um, helping me document because um, if you've ever been to a big fiber festival, especially if you've been to Rhinebeck, you know how overwhelming it can be and how easy it is to forget even you know what you did or who you saw. Um, so I want to give some shout outs to people that I met. Um, some of these will be you know perhaps known to you um, and some perhaps not. Um, there was a podcaster meetup uh, midday on Saturday and so I rolled up I thought oh maybe I'll you know, get the word out about get the Gage Hill Crafts um, YouTube channel and also meet some of the people that I've been watching. And the very first person, um, we, were, we were kind of off on the periphery. I was getting myself organized, ready to kind of dive into the fray. And the very first person I met was Amber. Um, she's Ms. Amber Johns uh, on Instagram, and I'll link to her account. And she's from Vermont, and she's been, um, you know, interacting with me on Instagram and I think uh, watching the YouTube channel as well. And so that was so nice. Um, and a nice coincidence to, to run into you, Amber, as like, the first person I met up there at the um, at that podcaster event. Other people I met um, were kn the Knitting Monk, uh, Aiden, and I am so sorry I forgot your name, Aiden. Um, it's, it's, I'm bad with names, I'll just say it. <laughs> I'm terrible with names. It's kind of a miracle that I can put faces with 
you know, with YouTube podcasts or with, um, with other channels. And so I was really proud of myself for recognizing you and knowing who you were. But of course, then there's the first name conundrum. Um, if you know somebody under their, under their pseudonym, um, if you don't know the knitting monk, uh, he, um, has a YouTube channel called a maker's pilgrimage and, um, he is a monk. And so it's great to see, you know, a crafter, an involved crafter who is definitely part of our community, but he is also part of a completely different community and um, of his monastery that he lives at. So it's, it's great to see that overlap. Um, it's great to see the projects that he's working on. Um, if you're, you know, if you're a man who is a crafter, um, you're probably interested in what other men are making for themselves and and he's a great one to look at he's also very good if you are new um, because he I don't think he's been knitting for very long and and yet he is bold and and challenges himself with very complicated patterns um, and sort of has no fear about it so I encourage you to go check out um, and that's a makers pilgrimage and I'll link to all these in the show notes um, speaking of men in our knitting community I met um, the gentleman from Leading Men Fiber Arts, they are an independent uh, dye company, yarn dye company, and they also do a um, YouTube channel called Dramatic Knits. You can find them at DramaticKnits.com. Um, I met Eric Lutz of Sticks and Twine podcast. He's another um, kind of chatty, you know, here's what I'm knitting, here's what I'm thinking of knitting, um, here's the yarns that I'm interested in. Um, type of uh, type of YouTube channel. So again, if you like that kind of thing, sometimes it's nice. You know, we we live remotely, and so I can't always have friends over when I would like some company. Um, and so a lot of these I'll put on, and I, you know, I might only pay h half my attention to them. But it's it's just nice to have somebody kind of talking in the background while I'm, while I'm doing something else. Um, and keep me company this way and talking about something that I'm interested in. So I appreciate, you know, all of these podcasts. They may be somewhat similar, um, but each person is knitting different things. And it's always just nice to to hear from people um, and in their own voice, in their own way, uh, with what projects they're working on. Um, I met Christy Glass again. Christy, I did meet you um, a couple of years ago at the Maryland Sheep and Wolf Festival. Your daughter was walking by and I recognized the sweater you had recently made for her. Um, but I got to um, be interviewed with Christy this time, and I'm hoping I make it into her Rhinebeck episode. Um, and she's very sweet and approachable, um, approachable person, and also easy to spot because she does like to wear hot pink. So that's that's handy if you're looking to pick her out of a crowd. Um, and I met Gay uh, from GG Made It. She does have an extensive blog that she keeps up and writes on regularly. And she is known for her love of orange. Um, she's known for all the cool products that she makes. And um, I encourage you to check her out. She's a sweetheart and totally approachable person um, and, and much beloved. Um, and she's into orange. And uh, the next two people have something in common with you, Gay, which is that they have orange hair. Um, so I met Amy Beth. Um, she's better known as the Fat Squirrel. And she, again, has a YouTube channel. Um, where she talks about her latest projects. She is also a sewist and she makes um, beautiful and fun uh, knitting bags. Um, I believe she probably makes some other things. Um, and I'm sorry, Amy, I don't have the whole catalog of what you what you make. Um, she makes a lot of custom things. So if you want things in a certain size or you want certain prints, um, she makes she makes lovely stuff. And she was at the Needles Up event, um, but it was really fun to talk to her. She's another one of those that I put on in the background to keep me company. Um, and Amy does also cover stuff other than knitting. She talks about her sewing. She talks about um, other kinds of projects. And she often shares recipes. Um, so, you know, I do recipes occasionally. And so if you're into cooking and you're looking for new ideas, um, check out The Fat Squirrel on YouTube and uh, and give, give that a try. And then my other redheaded friend, um, <laughs> Caroline, from Dunder Knits. Um, she recently started her own podcast called the Vicarious Knitting Podcast, and that's again on YouTube. Caroline is a Scot who's been living in London for a long time. She has a beautiful uh, kind of warbling accent. Um, I love listening to almost anybody from the UK. I don't care which kind of accent you have, whether it's posh or, um, you know, 
very working class or very broke. Um, I just love them all. And uh, Caroline, I really like um, uh, your aesthetic, I guess, and your love of Jen. We share that in common. And Caroline was giving out um, little dairy milk chocolates uh, to people who were trading with her. So that was really sweet and a nice pick-me-up. Um, obviously, I didn't eat mine because I wanted to show it on the show, so I was very restrained. But what a great thing, right, to just get a little piece of chocolate to help you through your busy day. Um, and, yeah, people were trading, um, and I'll talk about that more in just a second. Um, I also met Nathan Taylor of the Sockmetician podcast. Um, I had a bit of a fangirl moment. <laughs> Sorry, Nathan, if you're watching this. Um, I didn't think I would actually get a chance to see him. So he was teaching classes. I didn't want to be rude and, you know, try to barge in on him either before or after class. I did leave him a little goodie bag because I had some things I wanted his opinion on. So I thought, you know, I'd just sort of drop off my goodie bag and maybe, maybe be able to get uh, back with him in a couple of weeks after the show. Um, and then I'm standing there on the hill and I happened to look over and he's standing right there. And so I ran up to him because I knew that um, he was on a break between classes and he wouldn't have much time. And I think I startled him a little bit, <laughs> but Nathan, you were very gracious. And, and yeah, so thanks for, thanks for putting up with another adoring fan. Um, Nathan again is the sockmetician. And if you don't know him, um, he's really known for both his sock patterns and his love of double knitting. He was an inspiration to me to, to get back in and try double knitting again, and I'm very grateful um, for that. I met um, Meg of Meg's Favorites, and she also does the Wool and Cookies podcast. And um, that was a funny one because she was not at the podcaster meetup. Um, we just happened to be sitting eating lunch on adjacent benches on Sunday, and you know struck up a conversation um, and she was really sweet she had only been this was her second year at the New York Ship and Wool Festival and so we were sort of comparing notes on how our Saturdays had gone and um, had a rather extended conversation and so it was really great to talk to you and meet you and um, yes I am really hoping that you will knit a couple of my patterns let me know what you think of them um, and uh, Again, Meg has the Wool and Cookies podcast, and she also, as the name implies, um, discusses baking on her show. So um, if you are a cook or if you're looking for a podcast that covers more than just knitting, that's another one um, to try out. So I met Melissa and Lisa from Espace Tricot, which is a knitting shop in Montreal. And uh, Rick and I got to go up to the shop um, when we were in Montreal this summer, but unfortunately the two proprietors um, were not there. They were on school holiday, I believe. Um, so it was great to finally get to meet them um, because they also have a, a great podcast um, on YouTube called Espace Tricot, and uh, they, they discuss um, kind of the latest trends in knitting and what they're seeing as shop owners. And that's always uh, an interesting kind of behind the scenes thing, like how is a knitting shop run? How do shop owners decide which yarns to bring in? Um, what trends and patterns are they noticing? And um, they're also both uh, newbie designers. Um, I believe they've, but they've both been releasing a few patterns over the last year. Um, they're relatively new at it, and so it's great um, as I'm also just dipping my toe in the design world to um, feel a little bit of camaraderie when they talk about the, the trials and tribulations of getting those patterns written up and tech edited and, and, and samples knit up for their shop and all of that. Um, they're both prolific knitters, and they also have others in uh, who work for them who do a lot of, of shop samples. So um, they have quite a bit of new patterns whenever they put out a podcast. You know, you'll see at least five or six new things, um, which kind of is flabbergasting <laughs> um, based on the rate that one person can knit, you know, to see see all these new things coming out. So again, fascinating work from Ispas Trico, and they were handing out these cute little um, bag tags and with their information on them. And then they say, uh, what happens at Rhinebeck stays at Rhinebeck. Um, I think the idea is that you can put you know, in Sharpie, um, put your contact information on your knitting bag, and that way if you leave it somewhere, um, hopefully you can get your knitting back, because we all know how important that is. Um, and I'll definitely be using this, because I don't, I don't have a name tag on any of my knitting bags. Um, so thank you guys for sharing that. 
I was also able to trade um, with uh, Katie of Katrinkle's Knitting Jewelry. Um, now, Katie doesn't have a podcast, but she has an amazing business, and she makes custom stitch markers in all different um, style sizes and shapes. She also makes buttons. She makes uh, custom um, knitting bag tags, all kinds of things, um, yarn gauges, needle gauges, all types of stuff. If you don't know her, you should definitely follow her on Instagram and uh, check out her work. But this is her um, New York Sheep and Wool Festival stitch marker that she was trading with people. And um, it's you can see it's the, the Rhinebeck logo from this year. Super cute. Um, and thank you, Katie, for sharing. She had also shared one with me for the Vermont Sheep and Wool Festival a couple of weeks ago when I saw her there. We were both vending at that show. Um, that was the Vermont one. And um, yeah, great little stitch markers, removable. Um, and she's just a sweetie. Um, I've met her now a couple of times at shows, so I feel like we're starting to get to know each other a little better. And it just happened that we were both, you know, kind of looking to sit down and have a quiet minute. So we just sat in the grass together and like ate our snack and, and chatted a bit. Um, and yeah, she's a, she's a lovely person. Um, I encourage you to go up if she's vending at a show, just go up and talk to her. She's super approachable, um, a, a little bit shy perhaps. Um, so, you know, don't feel, don't feel bad talking to her cause, um, she's not like an in your face kind of a person. Very sweet and incredibly talented. Um, I've seen so many different designs and she's always coming up with new designs, um, for her, for her buttons and her stitch markers. Um, and let's see. What else do I have here? Okay, another uh, person that I got to meet and trade with um, was an author at the the uh, book sale, and I'll talk more about the book sale next week and all those people that I met. Um, but Velocity Boneg, and I hope I'm saying your last name right. I know I've got your first name okay. Um, she is the author of a book called Loom Party, and she is the creator of the Loom Tool. And if you're not familiar of with the loom tool. I'll put a picture of it here. Um, there's actually several different versions of this now. So it's a, an item that you can use to make pom-poms, tassels, friendship bracelets, all kinds of little um, fabric-y, yarny embellishments uh, for your knitting or for your other projects. And there's a whole book called Loom Party that comes with pattern ideas and projects, and that comes with one of the loom tools in it. Um, and I bought this book as a gift for my mother, um, and I was very, very pleased to be able to get it signed because Velocity was there um, at the book sale. And, uh, you know, it wasn't super crowded at her table, so I took a minute to, to chat with her a bit. Um, super sweet person, very, very bubbly and upbeat, as you would expect a pom-pom entrepreneur to be. Um, but she traded with me and gave me this um, little friendship bracelet that she made. So that was really sweet. Um, and I will put it on and wear it, um, but I wanted to show you guys. Um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's, I don't know, people are so generous and it's, it's so sweet. Um, I love this training thing. Um, if you go to Rhinebeck, and I think some of the other larger festivals are starting to have kind of a similar culture, but if you bring little goodies, then you can trade with other people, and it's a great conversation starter. Um, you know, especially if you're shy or you don't just want to use the same old opening line of what are you knitting? Um, you know, if you have a thing and, and, uh, and you can trade with people, it, it's quite nice. Um, so yeah, thank you, Velocity. That was really sweet to meet you, and, and thank you for the friendship bracelet. I will wear it. Um, and then the last trade I got to do was someone that I did not know, um, but she was on the podcaster Meetup Hill, and she was walking around with these little envelopes, and um, she would just say, take one. Take an envelope and open it. And so each envelope had a stitch marker in it, and depending on what stitch marker you got, you would either just get to keep the stitch marker, or you would get to have kind of a bonus prize. So I got the White Rabbit stitch marker, which was um, one that had a bonus prize attached to it, and that was a needle saver, um, or needle case, or sock saver. Um, I don't even know what people usually call these. Um, I have, so these are for holding your DPNs, if you're a sock knitter, double point needles, and um, for your, on your work in progress. So um, let's say you have something on the needles 
and you have four or five of these double points in your project, you kind of fold them all flat with, with your project still on the needles, and then you tuck them in here, and in this case, snap them closed. And that just keeps everything organized, keeps your needles from falling out, keeps your needles from punching holes in your bag, um, keeps your stitches from sliding off. And I have been looking for one of these. So thank you to Kim um, of Adventures in Craft uh, and Chasing Acorns. I think Chasing Acorns is the name of her business. And she makes these and a whole bunch of other cool things. And then she also has uh, the Adventures in Craft um, YouTube channel. And um, she, like me, um, has a small following right now. So go and check her out and give her, give her a subscribe and give her some love. Um, she's very talented. I have to say this case is very, very high quality. I'll turn it inside out. You can see um, how good like the seams are and all of her stitching is very well done. I love this fun print. Um, Kim, you would have no idea, but this neon green is the color of my main knitting bag that I use. Um, so this is going to go perfectly, and I'm definitely going to buy um, a matching one if you have one. I'm going to go on your website and see if you have one. And I'm probably going to get a set of these for my mother um, because uh, she also knits a lot of socks and uses deep pins. So thank you so much. Um, Mom, if you're watching, just ignore what I said, okay? <laughs> you didn't hear that part. Um, but thank you, Kim. That was, that was incredibly generous. Um, yeah, so you know, trading with people, striking up conversations with um, strangers, accosting, uh, you know, famous YouTubers, celebrities. It's all in a day's work, I guess, if you're at Rhinebeck. Um, but thank you to everyone who either stopped me or let me stop them and accost them. Um, like I said, it's, you know, it, it can feel funny going up to so many different people um, and saying hi. But um, it was just a lovely time and it made the experience so fun and it made it really feel um, like the tight knit community that I sort of was expecting. But to experience it is, of course, um, completely different from just, um, I don't know, hearing other people's accounts or, or thinking about what it might be like. Um, it really lived up to the reputation um, that I was expecting. So thank you everybody um, who either came up to me um, who just happened to strike up a conversation um, while we, you know, were sitting together or, um, or let me accost them um, with my camera and agreed to take a picture. I really appreciate it. Um, I will share with you uh, two more aspects of my haul um, from Rhinebeck and um, I'll talk about books uh, again next week. Um, but I had two other purchases. So one was intentional and I'll talk about that first. Um, this is the yarn that I got for the Papillon shawl, and I mentioned this in last week's episode um, because we went to that knitting shop in Westport, um, Massachusetts. Rick and I went um, to the, the yarn shop and found this yarn, and I thought I was gonna make the, the Papillon shawl with some contrasting yarn that I had in my stash, but when I got home, I didn't find anything that I really loved. And that's quite a bit of knitting on that shawl. So I knew that Rhinebeck was another good shot to try to find something that would coordinate with this. And it turns out that um, the Neighborhood Fiber Company had the perfect match. It's a nice dark yarn. It's gonna make the colors in this shawl pop. And I think these go really well together. Um, so I was very, very happy about that purchase. And then the other purchase I made was an impulse buy, and I was trying not to do this, but how can you pass up llama greeting cards? Okay, these were super cute. I, I just got a box of them. I was standing in line waiting to pay for all my books I bought, and these were great. So um, kudos to Mary Books Bookstore for having some very tempting things in that checkout line that I just couldn't pass up. Um, thank you all for watching, and I promise next week, I'm going to be a little bit more combobulated and a little bit less rambly, and I will have more uh, Rhinebeck information for you. Thanks for joining me, and tune in next time. Cheers.